Small houses are some of the hardest things in Minecraft to get just right because the detail has to be perfect. I've got a small house for you here with some great detail and a good interior. Don't you go anywhere. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night. Depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Amomads, in my house tutorial series. I've had a load of comments saying, Avo, Avo, you've not done a house in ages apart from that big mansion thing. You've not done any small houses for ages. And I've said, yeah, I did. I've done loads recently. And then I had a look. And actually, I've not done any small houses for ages. So guess what we're doing today? We're doing a small house. This house has got a nice but very simple small front garden. It's also got a three level roof to give it lots of interest along with a two floor working fireplace and chimney. It's got some great but very easy to make external detailing. There's a fully functional internal space with a mezzanine upstairs. Let's get on with it. As is not uncommon with some of these tutorials, we are going to do this ad hoc, making it up as we go along and go by feel. Often building a house works best when you go by feel. However, I do need a little bit of guidance on my palette. So this is what I'm likely to use. A bit of wood, a bit of stone, some little bit of green with vines and leaves, and obviously the stuff that you would have inside the house as well. We will focus on the outside rather than the inside, but we will make the inside look at least pretty good. Let's get on with it. With every build you do, you've got to have it in the right spot. And a house isn't a home unless it's got some great surrounding. We've got a superb little clearing here. Look at this. Wood for days, mushrooms, some wildlife, a little bit of water, and a cracking bit of mountainous region just over here for us to mine into. This is a great spot to have a house. So we're going to make ourselves just a little house down in this area right here. So let's crack on and make ourselves a nice square. First of all, everything starts with a square when it comes to small houses and how big you make that square totally depends on how big you want the house to be. So I'm going to have the core size of the house with these blocks being 11 apart. So this being the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. Bang. So there we're going to put another 11 in this direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. Let's finish off that square and you'll notice that that gives us an odd number on each side. There's a reason for that. Odd numbers just work better when you get to the roof. So you've got your square base. Now you have to decide how high you're going to come. And basic rule is the wider you've got here, the higher you have to go. And approximately a two to one ratio works quite well. We have got five high here, one, two, three, four, five, with this being 11 wide. So that makes two to one ratio, width versus height. Then bring yourself across a cross beam to create a box shape. This is gonna be the basic outline of your house and act as a scaffold around which you can work. It also means that you can start to build little bits off of these to make it look a little bit more pretty. Right, now decide where's the front gonna be? Where do you want it to face? Now I reckon I'm gonna have this guy facing this direction. So let's just get rid of this little bit of dirt which just needs to be terraformed out. It's offending my eyes and then come across to the center of this. So it's one, two, three, four, five. You know that is the center because you're gonna have four on either side because it's an odd number. Then come out an even number either side. So that's two and come out three. And then come along this side, two. So go to the center, one, two, and then come out three. This is gonna give you a small kind of front porch area and use the same rule. So we've got one, two, three, four, five wide. You want it two or three high, no more, otherwise it starts to look out of shape. We've repeated the same pull out section as we did on the front on the side, except we've made it one higher and one wider just to give that extra kind of dimension. Otherwise what will happen, you'll see something that just looks a little bit flat when you look at it from here. Then you want to start your roof. Yeah, I know it's weird. You do your roof right at the beginning, then you worry about the rest afterwards. Get yourself an edge that comes out one out from the front and do the same on the other side. The reason you come out one out, well, you look at a roof. Does it go absolutely flat against that? No, you want a little bit of depth and then come up underneath. And this has to be just a standard 12-12 gable that comes up in a straight diagonal. If you try to make this one too fancy, it won't quite work. You should find you've got a gap in the middle. Put a full block on that gap and then get another step and place it upside down. You'll see this style all over the place because it works. Why change it? It works. Do the same on this side. Make it one deep here and here. And then again, 
do a 12-12 gable lift all the way to the top, fill in the block there and pop in an upside down step. So you see there, you've already got two levels. You've got the front level there and one on the side. Now you may wish to change this to the front and this to the side. It's completely up to you. And then you need to decide, okay, so which way am I gonna put my actual roof on this? Now very often, this is where the front matters because on the front, you are gonna have the uh, open-ended gable facing the front. So this is the front, so we're gonna have another gable going in this direction. I'm gonna pleat this gable end at both ends and I'll be back right then. All the roof edges here are complete. Now do yourself a favor, do the smaller roofs before you do the bigger roofs. This is gonna save you loads of time in duplication and mining out later on. So literally follow the path of the previous um, steps that you've put in there and until you get to the edge of the house really and come along the other side and do exactly the same. On the small side, it's dead, dead easy. On the larger side, it starts to get more complicated. You notice we've got a gap here, fill that up with just a block of the same wood. I'm using spruce, it doesn't have to be spruce. You could use oak, you can use um, jungle. Acacia works really, really well. You'll notice that comes to the edge and leaves it open like that. That's perfectly fine. We shall do something with that with that wall. Come around the outside and do the same on this side as well. We've got both of those roofs now done. We're gonna come along to this side and we're gonna to start to join up these roofs. You'll notice there, when I put this uh, step in, above this bottom step here, it automatically snaps this roof out to meet it, so it makes a nice curve. Do the same, pointing diagonally in this direction, snaps to make a nice curve, and then keep going along. And when you get here, you'll see you've got a gap, and that's fine. Just bring that extra one along and pop it sideways, snaps to make a nice curve. Do that on both sides, all the way up, until you've got a completed roof. You can see these roofs meet each other really quite nicely, but they're a little flat. We're gonna do some detailing on these in a little bit, but before we do that, we need to raise this level up just one part. So get a slab, pop that along the top of the ridge of the roof, and then one on the cobble. So as you've got a much nicer point, and it makes this little gable point here stick out a little bit further. If you wish, you could do that. But I personally don't like it, it sticks out too far, but some people do enjoy that as a style. Do exactly the same on the top here and the one down here as well. That is gonna do two things. One, it's gonna point up your gable a little bit more, and two, it's gonna mean that this becomes a non-spawnable space because it is a bottom slab and bottom slabs are not spawnable. And if you combine that with the fact that all of these are steps, that ceases the entire roof being spawnable. We're gonna ruin that in a bit, but for now, nothing can spawn on that. Now the basic roof shape is on, we can start to worry about the walls. And if you come inside, you can see what we've done here is we've got some oak beams that are coming across there. Now we can make these oak beams a feature or we could just get rid of them. It's entirely up to you actually. What I'm gonna do, I'm not only gonna make them a feature, but I'm gonna change the shade. And I'm gonna turn them into um, spruce beams. And I'm gonna continue the spruce beam all the way around the entirety of the house. What that's gonna do is a couple of things. It's gonna break up the, um, what's gonna be a stone area, which uh, will become quite imposing as a stone area fairly shortly, but also it will allow this to have a continuous kind of ring around the entirety of the house. So that works really quite well. It's also just the right height for you to be able to sneak under. Then grab yourself a little bit of cobble because what we're gonna do is we're now gonna get cobblestone inside the, um, the run-ins of this house. We do not want to put our cobblestone there. We want to get a little bit of depth. So we're gonna run cobblestone on the inside all the way along, just to give us a feel as to what this house is gonna look like when it is complete. Some of this is filler block and we're gonna take it away and some of it will actually remain. But this is just to guide our eye, a little bit like when you use a pencil in a drawing, you need to just guide your eye along so as you know exactly where it is you're going with it. So come in here, there, and there, and there, and there as well. Now we're gonna be blocking in the outer beams in most of these instances, so don't be scared just to come all the way around the outside of those beams. Like that, and again similarly, here we're gonna come all the way around the inside until we get to the front. 
and we're going to pop that there like that. So this is the size of the inside of the house. You'll notice this has got quite a small space, that is okay. And this has got a bigger space, which is also okay. Now you've got your walls all mapped out, you can now start to put in the floor. It's probably best to put in the floor now because you can't really do any of the extra work until this floor is in. Now it's occurred to me that with the shape of this house, this isn't really going to be an exit anymore. So we're going to utilize that for a different purpose. This is now going to be our only entrance and exit with a um, out jutting piece like this, but we could decide to put another exit perhaps here that will allow us to have a back door or a side door. It doesn't have to have a jut out like that. So I'm gonna now replace the earth with some stripped logs. And in this instance, I'm gonna use jungle because we've got, if you see here, a really great texture on this stripped jungle wood. Feel free to use any different wood you like. My personal favorite is actually stripped oak, but I thought I'd go for something a little bit different with this one. I'll finish this off and I'll be back when I'm done. The floor is in, we've been really careful to make sure that all of those stripped oaks are facing in the right direction. However, you don't have to have all of them facing the right direction. You could even, if you wish, have some of them pointing in really, really strange directions. For example, you can have some facing up, you can have it facing a different way. Depends on the texture you want to achieve with your floor. It's entirely up to you. Me personally, I much prefer them all facing the same direction. Maybe it's an OCD thing, I don't know. Now work out where you're going to put your doors, we already worked that out really, and on the inside, always on the inside, put yourself the correct door for your house. I'm using a spruce, but you could use oak. I'd recommend that you use solid doors, um, it's just going to look better with this style of build. This is where we come along with our four basic building blocks, and that is cobblestone, stone bricks, stone, and andesite. They work beautifully together as a palette and when you use them in the right way they can create a stone wall that looks just fantastic with loads of texture and plenty of depth. But put yourself your blocks, replace some of these lower blocks fairly randomly with the different types of stone. One full set of walls later but you can't see out, you do not know what's going on outside although if you listen hard enough you can see there's a wandering trader or a wandering con man as they are more recently known. Come to get yourself a set of stairs to go up to the next level. This is gonna help guide where your windows can and can't be. Now don't have steps right jutting up against that wall because then you won't have a lot of space to move around at the top. So come out one and just put a single row of steps on that wall like that. So you can see that is where your steps are gonna live and then put a second row just to give yourself a little bit of room to maneuver. Walk up the steps if you wish so as you've got a full flight of stairs. Now you know you can't put a window where those stairs are, stands to reason, right? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna punch out a little window there, so as it works perfectly with the position of the stairs. We're also gonna punch one out there and one out there. And I think we also ought to pop one there and one there. That's gonna to start to give us plenty of light. We might also wish to pop one out there too, because you can have windows under the stairs. That's perfectly fine. Grab yourself some glass panes. You could use colored glass panes if you wish. I'm just gonna use standard glass pane and pop in a glass pane into each of these windows. Keep it secure, but you can still look out. This is the beginnings of what your house is really gonna look like. And if you come around the outside, you will see exactly what it is we're talking about, including that wandering trader that's basically using my roof as a shelter. It's not even raining. Let's get a second floor going. You're gonna need a little more room with a house this size. So level with the level of these st top steps here. Pop yourself two small pieces of slab and then create yourself a floor all the way around, leaving that you're exactly level with the top of this wall. This is, it might look a little bit weird at the moment, but we're gonna make it look better very, very shortly. Now create this the ceiling or floor, depending on your perspective, as large or as small as you want. You may wish to make it slightly mezzanine. For example, here, you could just have yourself a little bit of a gap, and that works really, really well, as long as you remember to support that corner. I've done exactly that and put a wooden post at the edge of the step running right the way up and past the level of this floor, because that gives now a bit of a balustrade that you can attach a fence to, to make it a little safety issue. You won't end up falling down if you uh, fence that one off. So if I grab myself some fence here, I'll just use oak fence and see how that looks against that spruce. I think that works perfectly fine. And then we can, if we wish, put another 
spruce log, perhaps there to finish it off. We've got a nice upstairs area now. The house is starting to come together now, but we need to close off these end gables. So I'm going to use a little bit of stripped wood and I'm using oak, but actually birch works really, really well here. It's not too light. You'd be quite surprised. And I'm going to block off that end gable completely. I'm going to come around this side. And again, we need to block off this end gable as well. There's not that much to block. So just come along here, here and here. That works quite nicely. And then come around here and we've got a much larger gable end. Now, this is where we can start to get a little bit creative. You can, if you wish, block it off along the log if you want to maintain this kind of space here. However, I personally find if you come inside, that gives a much nicer level of depth from the outside. It does limit your space a little bit on the inside, but that's okay, I don't think it matters too much. Get yourself a double layer, make sure you do it on this side as well, and bring yourself down so you create a square that is three by two, make sure they're all facing the same way and leave that square open, do exactly the same on this side. Perfect, a three by two square. And then again, get some glass panes, pop those glass panes inside and create a window at the gable end of this house. This house is now utterly and completely secure. You're not gonna have anybody trying to crowd into it. Just to underpin those stairs a little bit, we've put some upside down steps in just like that to give it a little bit of extra width. Otherwise, it just looked a little bit flimsy. You can then start to use this place as a little bit of storage or perhaps a prep area. We'll sort all of the internals out in a minute. It's time for us to come outside and start doing some detailing on here. First off, let's address these windows. We want to make sure that we've got some shutters either side of the window Otherwise, they just look a little bit bland and lonely. We can have a shutter right there just to work on that side. I wonder if we should be putting that window just there, to be honest. I think that's a better idea. Let's pop that like that. And I think I'll have that there. That is a much better plan for me. And then what we can do is we can get the shutters either side like that. I much prefer it. Then come around this side. Do exactly the same here, obviously. I'm gonna pop that like that. Uh, that can come in like that. No, it can't. We need to put that there like that. Okay, perfect. And then we need the shutter, which is there. And pop the shutter either side of that window. You get the idea. And then we need to start to think, what we're gonna have underneath these windows. We need something to show that these windows are not just flat. They need some, some width. So first off, I'm just gonna put an upside down step on either side, like that. That gives the idea of a window sill and a little bit of window dressing. Do the same here and here. I'm gonna do it on the other sides as well. Then we also need to get a little bit of greenness. Green makes a massive difference when you put a builder down. But don't just lob down some green randomly. Uh, if I just do that, oh look, that's green. Well, that doesn't quite work, does it? So what we need to do is we need to give a reason for the green to be there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this block here. This is the composter. The compost bin is not just good for composting, it actually makes the world's greatest planter. So now if we put the planter there like that, put some oak leaves above it, then that works really, really well. Be careful when you're placing these oak leaves because if you put them in like that, they'll turn into compost. Place them on the wall, not on the composter. And you can do this on either side. You can make it symmetrical, you can make it not symmetrical. It really comes down to your personal levels of taste. Continue to dress up everything around like that. Then think about what you're gonna do with this really weird looking gap across here. This does not want to stay stone. The stone, wood, stone, different wood does not work. You need to break it up. Now, a really good way of potentially doing that is by using some trap doors. It gives the idea of a wooden structure. Given that most of this is wood, that is in keeping with the rest of the structure. It matches up with the shutters and actually looks quite nice. So I think we're gonna go with that. Then get yourself some buttons. You're gonna want stone buttons rather than um, wooden buttons because stone buttons look best on wooden and wooden buttons look best on stone and put them just facing outwards on all of these pillars, every single one. Continue to dress up like that with all the windows, a little bit of green, stuff above those um, wooden gables, and maybe even put a little bit of dressing on the outside of this too, just to make it consistent, like that. 
and before you know it you're going to have something that's starting to look really quite fancy. Once you get going with some of these decorations they work really really quite well so as you can see we have gone up the level of the beams for these stone buttons to make sure that they are in line and look kind of look like they're keeping the beams in place and we've dropped one level with the smaller areas these smaller gables so as the buttons aren't too high it wouldn't look quite right. We have placed some lanterns in under the eaves and also on top of some random upside down steps so it looks like they're Know, stands deliberately there for some lanterns we've hung some more lanterns up we've also at this end where we were going to put that entrance remember we've created uh, just a bit of a feature really we've got two upside down steps surrounding uh, a little bit of greenery we've got a log inside just for that tiny hint of the internal texture then an upside down step with a lantern on it at the end of each gable we've put some fence posts looking like it is supporting that gable end. i just think it gives it a little bit of extra depth i quite like the way it works so i'm going to keep it that way what i've not done is this end here so i'm just going to do that with you if i bring my spruce slab across what we've done is we've just added slab to add a little bit more punch to each of these gables uh, and it adds almost like a shelf type of area. It won't be spawnable simply because that light will stop it from being spawnable. It does add a little more overhang, a little bit more interest perhaps in some of these areas. And then we've got some more fence posts, a little few more composters. We've put on these upside down steps that act as windowsills. We've put some plant pots with some flowers in them and we've continued with the theme of the composter with the leaves on. We've got most of that decoration done I think but what we do need to do is start to have a look at this roof because the roof is now simply too uniform it doesn't meet spec anymore so what we're going to do is we're going to just randomly pop a few blocks now this does ruin the non-spawnable element of this build I will admit but what it does give you is a nice textured roof do it randomly please don't start counting in from the sides otherwise it's just going to look way too uniform and you want to make sure that you've got two maybe three in each row and you can see there it looks quite nice and random grab another one there I think and there like that so it just roughens up that route just enough to stop it looking so straight do that all over the roof so we've got the house looking okay but we now need it to be just a little bit more functional so what we're going to do is we're just going to mine underneath these two composters that are on this gable end here we're going to grab ourselves a water bucket and we're going to pop a bucket of water underneath each composter we're then going to replace that block there that does not remove the water it's still there and that water is perfectly functional in terms of hydrating soil so grab yourself a hoe and dig out two plots that are three wide and four long that will allow that water to hydrate those completely grab yourself a little bit of fence and line one past on each side these little fields that we've made here and then come along and run the fence so as all we've got open is this little open path here get yourself a gate in the same wood and pop a gate there and now we are really starting to create a nice open farming area lantern on each corner here a lantern on each side there and that will give you sufficient light to be able to plant crops in all of these fields so let's just get these planted up We've planted up some pumpkins along one side, carrots and wheat all the way along in single rows so they grow faster on the inside and then some melons on this side. So that will allow just enough fruit and veg for us to be able to sustain ourselves and then we can expand out the fields outside as we wish. I'm just going to come to what has now become the front door and we're going to pop in just a little bit of parthage. I think we need not too much, just enough to give a hint that we are quite willing and open for people to come and visit us like that and then we're also going to augment that up with some coarse dirt and some gravel and pop in just a little bit of fence post just to make it look nicer. 
we've come inside for a moment because we're going to make ourselves a little fireplace and we're going to do it in this corner here and there's a reason why because it just works as you go up right the way up to the roof so what we're going to do is we're just going to build up this wall in this direction and we're going to take out those two bits there because we need to continue the wall straight up then we're going to grab ourselves a campfire and we're going to get ourselves a hay bale and this hay bale is going to allow us to have a much longer smoke plume that will come out of our um, roof so you can see there that the smoke's getting all caught up there so we need to come upstairs in fact we'll punch it out first the smoke will tell us where we've got to take it we come upstairs and you can see this is the exact block that we are going to need to punch out to be our chimney so that can go up in that direction now we know where that block is we can start to build the chimney around this side you can see we've got a natural area that this is going to work and that chimney can just carry on it's not all going to be the same block but ultimately once we've finished we'll just make it look a little jazzier but this is how the upstairs and the downstairs is going to be kept nice and warm now because we want a fire in both areas we're going to kind of cheat and make it look as if we've got this chimney serving two separate fires so downstairs we've got a campfire and that smoke will continue up and go out that's brilliant but what we want is an upstairs campfire too so stick yourself another hay bale and another campfire that will not block the smoke from downstairs to the point where it starts to look like it's blocked if you see look the smoke just continues to go as if it's normal and then you come up you've got another fire on the next floor that continues up and around I'm just going to pop another thing there that gives the impression of two fires but doesn't actually cause any problems let's finish off this chimney that chimney now works beautifully and you get a massive long smoke plume from that higher fire so we are just about done. We've got a nice little entranceway here with a tiny little pond, a little bit of sugarcane. I've popped a little bit of string on those two outer sugarcanes so they don't grow taller than two because, well, frankly, I just think they look quite nice if they've got differentiated heights there. If you wanted to turn it into a little easy sugarcane farm, take the string off and just keep bashing them off and you get a bit more sugarcane. You can see here the pumpkins are starting to grow. The melons are starting to grow. The chimney is puffing away like a good one. It is looking all right from the outside. Planted up a couple of little trees there that didn't grow too high. Wouldn't actually have mattered if they've grown higher, but I quite like the size of them. Then come down this path. We've interspersed it with the right-clicked shovel path, the gravel, a little bit of coarse and also some wood. It looks quite nice with the wood in there. I think it just breaks it up really well. Coming inside, break that up. We have got an entranceway here and also here. A little bit of a working area with an ender chest. We've used scaffold as a little table just to put a little bit of decoration in. But generally speaking, this is functional. We've got all of the necessary uh, crafting and smelting. And also we've used this little cubby hole here for three double chests. So these chests can be easily accessed and we've got a boatload of storage as a result of that one wide cubby hole coming around the outside a little bit more storage we've got plenty of chests uh, barrels sorry around the top here and a little bed area with an armor stand and another chest just for storage right next to the cozy fire I think this is a quite a nice place to live there we have one small house, relatively simple to make, some fairly basic techniques to bring out loads of depth into the sides of the house because the flatter it is, the worse it is in my opinion. But that's quite a nice finish to a what's actually less than a single chunk wide. I quite like it. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying them and I will keep on making them. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see it in my sub club. I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.